there isn't really much of a latter point in this tournament, Blue. Um, there isn't a lot of time for them to uh, really get themselves going. So I'm expecting them to come straight out of the gate pretty hot, especially given the... Uh, kill MVP, uh, sorry, the kill prize that we've got on offer here. Um, anyone that's familiar with BDS, anyone that's familiar with Shaiko, regardless of where they finish, Shaiko ends up with a nutty amount of kills. Yep, definitely going to be the case. So he'll certainly be hunting for that kill leader reward. The bounty we've put onto it alongside of the MVP victory too. So the band's starting to roll out. No surprises really so far, as at least with regards to Oregon. Ying still quintessential for the basement assault, so she is quite commonly banned and out for that reason. Fink as well is still prolific inside of this meta right now, so it makes sense to remove here in nearly all scenarios, but obviously turns into a little bit of a self-handicap if your team also relies on that. Away from that, Mirror gets knocked out on the first defensive side. That'll round out both of Falcon's bands, leaving the last one in the hands of BDS. Where do they want to take this? We'll find out in just a second. I really, really love the desk, by the way. Twister, fantastic. Always been a big fan. Yeah. Great to see him on the desk. Obviously, Fresh is all right as well. But I quite like how this has gone just entirely opposite from what they were expecting. They were talking about Thatcher bands, Maverick bands, Mirror band. Fair enough, we did get it. An Arcade band, potentially. And look at what we've ended up with. We've <laughs> Ying Finger band. And now, so that tends to be a base that a lot of teams will use as a starting point. So hopefully this will also be the case for the Falcons. Like we talked about before, though, already losing Finca is going to make at least one element of this basement assault a little bit more difficult. But they already have plans to work their way around the interesting lineup from them here, but very much the expected one to assault the lower floor site as we take a look at the first lineup from the Falcons. BDS going to start things off on the defense here, not wasting any time getting themselves straight down into laundry. For anyone unfamiliar with the way that Oregon plays out, it is typically seen as one of the sites, or one of the maps, should I say, that the defenders have the most opportunity on. And you would very much expect defenders to be coming away with a lion's share of the rounds here. Going down to the basement is usually a good starting point. Hitting us with a little bit of a roam. We've got a Lems out there, just done a little bit of a drone hunt. Does miss that one just outside of the drone, but it's going to be playing on that Malusi. So once those Banshees are placed, he is free to do basically whatever he wants, and it seems like like he wants to challenge this early roam clear. Talking earlier about how the defenders generally have a lot of opportunity. For this site, it's going to be a little bit more limited unless you want to risk yourself on the first floor. Try to go for some more aggressive swings. Occasionally, we'll have the hold over by the freezer stairs and occasionally cross the hall into security, too. You can even see a little bit of that broiling up from BDS by the freezer stairs specifically as one player is prepared for the challenge here, but is more than likely going to lose that confidence. Lems, by the way, now pulling back after being spotted out by that drone further down yellow. And there's no real need to roam too far. Lems has done a good job there. He's got rid of a couple of drones. He's held a little bit of ground for the time being. And a couple of nades have been burned on the side of Falcon. So very much a par for the course at the moment. We've got Renshiro on the back stairs. He's going to be keeping an eye on that uh, tier three, sorry, tier um, tier one landing area in and around the big tower. And I mean, where would Shaiko be if he wasn't in his spot, right? Absolutely the case. So Shaiko could be patiently waiting for the inside of his own position and we'll Wait and see now if he's going to be able to make a strike from it. The Falcons definitely building themselves up. You can see at least one of their players looking to pop open the hatch leading down into electrical, but Mad Skills at least has been called away from that for now. They want to focus up on the laundry hatch for the time being instead. So we can see j -Lad a little bit more quickly be able to deal with the hatch sitting directly above E just with those X-Kyra. Speed things up a little bit here as Falcons do need to start worrying about how they're going to get themselves into the basement. Not going to be stressed for time just yet, but wasting over that the next 30 seconds or so could start to show a bit of a problem for the Falcons as they more than likely attempt to work their way down. The Falcons have done a great job here. They've got a couple of hatches open. They've taken really good map control. It's not cost them anything apart from a handful of drones. And they've still got some of those drones left to figure out where these defenders are going to be in the final execute. We've got a nice push coming through, through Freezer. We've got a little bit of presence on those back stairs. Rafael actually going to be the first player to get downed out here. Shaiko turning his attention towards those tower stairs as well as the crossfires start to come in. He's going to pick up the first confirmed kill in this round. A heavy cost, at least with regards to Rafal's own HP. He'll be down fairly low. More than likely going to have to kill himself back after that. But at the moment, it's just a shutdown from BDS. Three kills, zero responses. Finally, we're going to see Koto is able to hold his own against Shaiko. Knocks him out, but he's not even fully down the stairs just yet. Doesn't have a free way to work himself into it either. He's got up to two different members of BDS looking to knock him out. And Shiro will seal the deal, leaving it all on mad skills. Won't be able to maintain either Rafal. Mops up shop here and locks in the first round for BDS. 
BDS holding fast there inside of the site, playing in and around those power positions that we all know and love. Well, you at least love them if you are on the defending side of things. Falcons just struggling to break through there. It was a fantastic push. They had coordination from either side. They had a bit of presence in bunker. Backstairs was covered and freezer. But none of the pushes really worked out. You only need one of them to really come through, and then you can really start to apply a little bit of pressure there. A lot of gunfights go in the favor of BDS. Successful in round number one, but switching things up now onto that top floor. BDS don't necessarily need to do anything special to close it out there either, just playing directly into their strategy, wasting out that first two minutes, basically just trying to slow down the Falcons' hatch openings as much as possible. Unsuccessful in that, but they don't lose anything from it either, so nothing majorly lost as they seem to be well prepared for the actual execute once Falcons had built up the confidence to go for it and had no problem shutting it down from that point onward. It's up to the Falcons now to change up their own fate as BDS will be moving onwards yeah, to the you. upstairs dorm hold. Double hard breach set up here right, from Falcons, so you would expect them to go through that big tower area as well, use the Maverick to open up in through Attic, and then use the Thermite for the more traditional breach in through games. Everyone there discovering one of Shaiko's cameras inside of the Lampshade. It's certainly going to be uh, featured in a couple of ranked games, I am sure, but Valkyrie on this map, loads of information opportunity. You can really get those cameras out there, and it gives you that little bit of an edge, especially if you know you're going to be taking some more than a aggressive gunfights in the later part of the round. JLad getting himself into position now, just going to drone out that master bedroom area before he likely moves on through and tries to thermite open that wall. I end up seeing that camera that was placed behind the lampshade become fairly useful for BDS here, but meanwhile, Alem's just going to go straight for it. No support on the position from Joker, so Alem's will be able to knock him directly out. Not even a chance for a response there for the Falcons. And BDS will have the 5v4 locked in as a result of that. No real potential to refrag that one either. Alem's using Oryx's dash ability there fantastically, getting himself out and back in. And then more than... The, the interesting part about that for me, really, Blue, was the fact that he used the burst once he was back in the building because he wanted to get away from the scene of the crime as quickly as possible. It wasn't about getting out quickly. It was about getting safe quicker. The wall is going to be open. No attempt to impact breach from below, at least not a successful one. But Alem's is still a threat down here. Lems potentially can line up a very critical flank in the late round here. If we see the remaining members of the Falcons try to haphazardly push themselves in both through the arsenal as well as master bedroom routes they seem to be approaching right now. Case sitting in the hands of JLAD, and he's already moved himself further into the depths of that master bedroom area, soon to be supported by a second teammate here. And this is the problem. Already losing two players early on. You really need these additional player counts to be able to work your way in and trade your way into holding this site, especially because they're pushing in from the master side instead of trying to work over towards Big Window, where you would really, really need that support working itself up through White to at least make a bid for the play. But right now, Falcons are truly struggling to get that entry that will be necessary to at least allow them in. Oakhills nearly manages to get it for himself here, but is pressed back, taking a lot of damage in the process. And Kotos as well has been down outright. Renshiro will be able to finish off Kotos now, knocking him down, leaving it all on to Jaylad and Oakhills. Shaco there gonna, gonna fall as well as the foul eventually gets traded out, but Renshiro is there to pick up those pieces. He's doing all is their concern locked in. And now moving downstairs here into the meeting room hold, which generally is the go-to site of the remaining two. This is one of those maps where we have a rare shared site. As obviously the kitchen would come into play had they chosen the other option here to go over towards cafeteria, but BDS not favoring it. That other site hold can get a little bit claustrophobic for a lot of defensive lineups, so they'll go over here towards meeting room instead, where you've got a little bit more room to breathe spread yourself out and maintain secondary positions on the defense if you get pushed out of your initial position. It's always a little bit personal preference between the teams, and I think certainly at the start of Oregon, it was, you know, it was all about the kitchen side of things, uh, the kitchen dining side of things, but now we've come into the new meta of meeting is really the way to go. The hatch play that you can get away with, obviously you've got Attic above you with a hatch, you've got a hatch below into electrical box, you've got things like C4s, you can really start to play around that. BDS are gonna be bringing two this round on Shaiko and Renshiro, so we're gonna to look to try and make use of that. And something that we've seen for the first time this game, at least, is gonna be the Azami. Val is gonna be bringing that to try and create some of those Kiba barriers and just make things a little bit more unpredictable when you swing in those corners as an attacker. So Falcons off to the usual start, and once again, quick clearance of the small tower area. Not going to see much resistance come in for BDS. They will as well pop open the top down just to make sure there's no one trying to hold a more aggressive angle from BDS further out towards cafeteria. Aside from that, though, not a whole lot 
Potos is going to be able to gain here on the Ash. So he will need to move himself away from this. And the rest of the Falcons will push ever forward here from the yellow side to start putting some pressure in against the kitchen side defense, interestingly enough, of BDS. Generally speaking, we tend to see teams attack us from the big tower end of it, using that backstage wall as a bit of a jumping off point to work yourself into a site. For some teams, though, it tends to be a little bit too one-dimensional. So curious to see how Falcons will now try to work things as they obviously are prioritizing the kitchen side currently. Struggling to get past that mute jammer, as we can see that JLad is just having a little bit of problem there. With the nades coming through now in an attempt to try and clear that utility, and the Selma will detonate accordingly. A couple of nice cameras here, one for Shaiko potentially to peek onto that main area with. Got a great access onto that double door and gets a little bit of a glimpse as to what's going on just at the entrance to garage there as well. Got a nice camera that's backing Renshiro up. So spending quite a bit of time on the cameras here, just gathering that information. Really not looking to give too much away. Rafal gets away with it there as he places one of the keeper barricades onto the window. Costs him a little bit of HP, but he does manage to keep his life. This makes it increasingly more difficult now to try and peek through. And with no breaching rounds left, you're left with nothing but your fists. Thankfully, those are going to chain together, so only needs to knock out really one of those barricades to be able to get both of them out. But unfortunate, Fortune has struck the Falcons yet again here, as we are going to see BDS claim the initial kill of the round for the third time in a row. Looking to try and replicate it into a second kill, just like we saw back on round number two as well. They've already got a little bit of damage on Akotsos here. You can see the nades being thrown in from below to try to knock out Rafal, but they're just not landing in the correct position. O kills, continuing his own consistency here, finds a pickup for the big window, but it's going to be unable to carry it further than that. Rafal shuts it down, is ready for the challenge once again from the kid stairs as well. So that'll send away some of the pressure from the Falcons. O kills has been knocked into a down state, leading it all into JLAT. And now just mad skills hands here. BDS with strong control over their third site. Looking to lock in the third victory as well here and should be able to do things. Mad skills just one bullet away from his own knockout. Also important to note he needs to get this case down on the ground at some point in the next five seconds. Just not going to have enough room to work. Him. Sitting back here, trying to negotiate as many kills as possible to pad the stats a bit, but Rafal will shut it down instead. And BDS get the perfect rotation to start out this map. Not a bad way to start things off if you are a BDS fan or a BDS player indeed. Three clean rounds there on each of the most prominent sites here on Oregon. Now all it is is a rinse and repeat. More importantly, it's an opportunity for the Falcons to say, right, we've seen yourselves. We know exactly what you're going to do. How are we going to approach this differently? Be a good time to use tactical timeouts to maybe discuss that and just to really go over how you're now going to approach attacking onto that basement, how you're going to approach attacking yeah. onto that top floor on the next rotation round. Because one of the big problems that we've seen up until this point really has been the time. The time has been something that Falcons have really struggled with. We're going to head back in game, folks, and see how exactly the Falcons will look to innovate. No tactical pause, though. Maybe wanting to save that for a little bit later on into this map. Maybe for when things are starting to look a little bit more desperate, but we'll have to see here. Could be coming up after this round as well. Maybe they feel they already have a corrective correction strategy to be able to make up for the mistakes back on round number one. And maybe if things don't go well here, that's when we'll end up seeing the pause yeah, from them to, to try and course correct when they would have to go for dorms a second time. We'll hold our breath and wait to Five see exactly to what the Falcons will throw out in this round round as we're going to see that fairly standard lineup for attacking it. Obviously, we'll see Kotos bring a little bit of surprise in the nook, and we'll have to wait and see what exactly he'll be cooking up with that operator. Nook's really skyrocketed in terms of popularity. Obviously, with Finkerban, you kind of have to look toward other options. And a Finkerban often forces a Nook, and a Nook can be as big a problem. Sure, you've not got an LMG, but you're a little bit of a nightmare. You've still got two grenades. You're quite quick. You can evade cameras. You're pretty quiet. You've got all the things that really are big ticks in a box, if you will, when you're looking at an operator to select. Looks as though we're going to see a bit more of a direct approach here in onto that bunker area. Shaiko has got himself into a bit of trouble here as he knows that somebody's likely going to be outside there in and around one of the barrels, but an opening exchange goes BDS's way once again. This time, however, immediately traded. Much better hold this time from the Falcons. Jaylet will be his first kill of the game as well. Finally seeing him get onto the board. As far as the rest as the Falcons are concerned, it's almost a consistent push here. Looking to bleed out the rest of the presence from BDS, which is quite prominent, especially here towards Big Tower. They definitely are pulling no punches this time with regard to in their roam game. Looking to shut down any shenanigans that the Falcons look to get up to, especially when it comes to applying pressure to this backstairs push, which was the centerpiece of their play as they tried to work their way into the basement back and around number one. For the Falcons, though, things continue to build up as they have taken control of the front side of the building. Still need to transition through meeting and bleed out Renshiro as well as the supporting player's position that you can see over there in the corner from Alems. 
Renchero not looking to move all too much here, as we're seeing a little bit of a movement from this Nook, maybe looking to try and more directly approach the player that's playing those back stairs. We do still have a Lems hanging around inside of Tower as well, and oh, could have maybe picked himself up a freebie there, but gets taken out of the crossfire. Great bit of play there from Falcons, finding themselves two kills and gaining themselves a man count advantage for the first time in this series. They've got loads of time left to work with here. C4 up through the hatch will be successful off the back of a little bit of information no doubt you've still got the small matter of dealing with Shaiko and Bride. Bride still two of those toxic canisters well, in hand so we can start to try and deter some of this attacking push. Jaylag gonna drop the hatch diffuser in hand he's dropping in solo and he's left the, left the case oh, no. cold on the ground. Shaiko he finds himself three can he pick up the final kill it's all gone so terribly wrong Falcons they had that advantage and they've slowly given it away one at a time now with 30 seconds left and the case cold it's gonna be very difficult Difficult here for Kotos to really get anything going. Shaiko swings, gets the visual, but can't land the finishing blow. Still, he has Bride as backup playing inside of the elbow. ADS saves his life, and Shaiko hits the swing. Four kills on the round. Great save from Shaiko, as well as the rest of BDS that was still alive at that point in the round here. Good follow-up as well from the Falcons, making much better control, especially of the early and mid portions of the round, able to lock out that aggressive positioning, especially over there towards Big at Tower that we were seeing from BDS. But of course, the follow-through to actually get downstairs, get into the basement, that's where things really fell apart for the play from the Falcons. They're not expecting as much aggressive resistance to the back stairs push. And as well here, Shaiko removing what I believe was the intel gain in O kills. He was sitting on drone, and that Nitro was taking them out, so that removed the intel game for them, making them a little bit less sure of themselves. They work their way back down through those back stairs, and of course, leaving the window of opportunity open for the frags to come out, mainly from Shaiko there. A round that certainly could have gone the way of the Falcons. They got very close inside of that one, and if it hadn't been for the ability on BDS for players to clutch up, could have been a very different story. That being said, it's still a clean four rounds in a row here as we move back upstairs to the top floor for the second time. BDS looking to make those back-to-back -back defensive side rotations and really pile that pressure on quite early inside of the series. I'm a little bit worried, Blue, I'll be honest with you. I've spotted something that's come to my attention. We're seeing a little bit of an Amaru come through. Is that the answer? Certainly find out as it's going to give you a much greater capability to leap into the site quite literally when it comes to the case of mad skills. So it is going to be a little bit of a backup here when it comes to the hard breach department in the event that JLAD finds himself picked off early. We do have the can openers in the pocket of mad skills potentially help out in that department. We've seen, of course, the Amaru brought in a few other times as well, most notably by Wild in our previous match, but it wasn't always for the Gara hook. I will submit that it's more than likely for the Gara hook in this specific site, but oftentimes it just comes down to the fact that it's a comfort pick with the G8 scope as well, uh, making that obviously a little bit of a bolstered reason to pick up this operator and bring them into the fold. And then, yeah, you have the guard hook if it becomes relevant, but that's more of a secondary thing, much like uh, we kind of see with like alibi on the defense. Yeah, you get the can overs as well, so you can argue there's a bit of utility to be found there. And it's not always about using the, the guard hook at the uh, first opportunity. That's often what just leads to disaster. Um, often there's times where you can gain, you know, nice little rotations with it. You can hop yourself outside and get back in very quickly if the opportunity presents itself and for at least the meantime mad skills hasn't got himself into harm's way too much just yet just hanging out on the armor repel keeping a little bit of a cross there and allowing his team to make a little bit of progress that progress is going to be opening up the main breach Nitro goes out, the JLAD, oh, the timing is so unfortunate for JLAD. Thought he was going to be secure, started to move out a bit prematurely as the C4 was blowing up, and unfortunately left himself open in the doorway to the explosion of that. Had he waited behind it for just a split second, more than likely would have dodged all the damage from that Nitro. Good news is, we do have the backup hard breach once again coming in from the Amaru. More than likely not going to be all that much needed at this point in the round, but still, missing a player here once again is not going to be the recipe for success for the Falcons will have to see how they try to make up for the 4v5 as at least O-Kills finds an open window, works himself forward and knocks Renshiro directly out, but unfortunately won't be able to keep pushing into that, has to fall back to pick up the case, and in that window of opportunity, Shaiko will be able to frag things back for BDS. 
Great play to remove it, Red Shiro as well. But these C4s are dishing out so much damage. That's two for two on the round. Shaiko eventually gets a little bit too over aggressive, and O'Kills is there to take him out. Picking up his second. Still keeping things competitive here as he hops on in. Tanks a bit of damage on the Toxic Babe and gets himself into a bit of an engagement as well. Alem's chilling at the top of these white stairs now. Has a very important part to play holding that cross. O'Kills has recovered the diffuser, but is he going to be given the time and the space to get this case on the ground? Alem's going to hit him with the swing as Kotos finds one onto a lens, but it is a fraction of a second too late. BDS going to be there. Utility wasn't connecting from the attacking side. Obviously, we'll see here on the replays from the defense. It was working out swimmingly. Two for two on Nitro sells that round as well. It's not even needing to directly contest against a lot of the members of the Falcons to knock them out. It leaves them struggling to find entries that they can realistically work into a site take. Makes things very difficult when you're coming up against these Nitros and you've not really got too much of an option. Nitros are such a devastating tool. We talk so often about how good nades are for the attackers. And yeah, nades are great. You get a few more nades and you get Nitros as well. So that's maybe what gives them the edge. But Nitros are just so devastating. Especially when you just hear that rip and you see it flying towards you, just nothing you can do about it. It really is a little bit off the freebie on occasion, especially if time is on the defender's side. Attackers are moving out to look Shaping up here for a clean sweep from BDS as they go back down into Kitchen Pan meeting. I want to try and make this a successful six rounds in a row on the defense. We did see a bit of a top floor clear come out last time from Falcons when attacking onto this site. But there was a little bit of everything. We saw a little bit of a scuffle at those rear stage stairs. There was a bit of a push in through meeting, and we got runouts to boot as well. I don't suppose that BDS are going to continue on this runout train, especially given the way that the rounds have been going for them so far. But you can't count out that early aggression. Saw Mad Skills already looking to work his way in and is going to do so now here at Arsenal. Takes control for himself and actually has a pretty open pathway to lead himself through most of the second floor. That Azami barricade will be standing in the way though. That's the saving grace for a fall right now that he has that in the path of this clear from the Falcons and specifically Mad Skills here. Koto's having the hold on the other side of this. He's going to try to put pressure back onto the kids hold but again as Azami barricades blocking things off. Too much of a nuisance at the moment for this clear. Falcons is going to have to be the first one to strike and move themselves forward. Just when are we going to Ooh. see it? Mad skills, though. Catching that peak from Ranchero over at Big Tower. Strikes first this time for the Falcons. A very much needed kill for this team as they have struggled to come back from these 4v5 deficits. Now let's hopefully give the team a little bit more confidence to continue pushing forward as they can afford to lose that extra player here now. Mad Skills living up to his name there. That was a great shot all the way down the highway. We're going to see some nades get thrown out now as well, but Lem's holding a very skinny angle and takes out Joker there, that DMR dishing out just so much damage. A couple of body shots is all it takes. Alem's look at the pressure he's coming under. Manages to find himself a down onto Mad Skills. His teammate is going to finish that one off. Peeks onto the window. Let's go, Alem's. He's racking him up for free. Jalen eventually shuts him down, but he's greeted with the laser gate. Not really going to be able to transition through that too easily, at least with not art taking a chunk of damage. Oak Hills, he's going to be inside of Zulu downstairs. Maybe looking to put a challenge in on to meet him, but it looks as though there's a little bit of a lack of information here. Only one drone available for Okils alive. Still a couple out on the map, but where they are remains to be seen. They might not be all too useful. Patience will pay off, though, for JLad as he levels things up into a 2v2. Great stuff from the Falcons, playing into that extra time back that they've had on this round as well. But now comes the hard part of this push. They've been limited on attacker utility. They still should have enough to be able to work past this laser gate. O-Kills will not. But if JLad's somewhere nearby, he might be able to come in and assist. There's still one Selma sitting in his pocket. He can shuck that through. Nitro out from Shiko, though, and it catches JLad, leaving O-Kills without a choice. We'll stuff that. There is definitely improvements being made to the Falcons, even on a round-by-round -round basis. Yeah. The problem is, it's just too little in terms of improvements here. And it's all coming in a little bit too late at the end of the day. BDS still able to secure the win in every single one of these close scenarios. That is going to hurt the morale just a little bit here of the Falcons. But obviously, it's a best of three, so they still have the hopes of maps two and potentially three if they're going to be able to continue improving on their own game and left. rebound. Of course, we also still have the second half to play into here. We have seen very one-sided teams Five that they left. really switch on when they move to the other sides. So don't count the Falcons out of this one just yet. Obviously, a massive amount of pressure thrusted against them, however. 
Oh, and I'll have to be perfect from this point forward. I mean, if there's a map to do it on, Oregon's not a bad place to start for six rounds in a row on the defense. It wouldn't be the first time we've seen it. Let's be honest. Um, this can be a little bit of a crazy map, but you do mention there about the pressure and how much that occasion really starts to get to you when you cannot afford to make a single mistake. And that's when BDS will choose their time to strike. Renshi's going to opt for the fuse this time, which is a very choice pick. Um, they obviously know they're going to be attacking downstairs, so could be looking to... Uh, do something a little bit fruity with that, but it looks as though it's going to be a pretty concise push in through bunker. There's going to be a very important gunfight to win, though. We can't afford to give up the elbow that quickly. The nade comes through. It's going to dish the damage, and the swing will follow. A couple of kills are going to trade off one for one, as we are going to see a four versus four now. Greedy, he's going to be next one through, but all kills is there to reply. C4 of his own, but it won't land, unfortunately. The kills do continue to fly, though. There's been no strategy here at all for a beat. Yes, they have just been pushing headlong into everything. Two versus two now as the kills continue to trade. Rafal picking up one. Can he grab the second? Gonna look to try and flash out the player just behind the pillar and maybe try and recompose himself a little bit. There's still loads of utility here and there's still tons of time. Once again, the Falcons able to work themselves into this, but BDS definitely in an advantageous position given the fact that they have that extra time bank, that extra patience to play into. Falcons get a little bit nervous, starting to step out, but no, it's not nervousness, it's confidence from O-Kills as he knocks out Renshiro, leaving it all on Rafal, who is unfortunately just not gonna have Dog in this fight to move himself into it. He tries to push himself out, gets knocked down, and finally the Falcons are on the board. And you hear it, the crowd. We heard him chanting earlier, but finally they come alive as the Falcons pick up their first round. It was a bit of a murmur earlier, wasn't it? The crowd yeah. was a little bit quiet, a little like, bit timid. Go, yeah, yeah, I was like, let's go, Falcons. There we go. Yeah, a little exactly. bit more energy in it exactly. now with that round. The classic NA chant of let's go, what an <laughs> X team, you know? Let's go, whoever. But they're really getting themselves active now, and so they should. They've just picked up a round against BDS, and let's be honest, it's not the first round that they could have picked up. There's been a lot of close rounds up until this point, and BDS are obviously going to have to do something a little bit more than just pushing through Bunker. So let's see here how the members of BDS are going to look to try and close this game down. Obviously, we'll be on a different site as we move ourselves upstairs, and that means we'll see a little bit of a different operator lineup potentially coming in from BDS as well. The Nook stays in play and will be seen on a lens this time around. No sign of any repicks here either, so more likely going to lock in. Start from the Nook, what is a fairly standard lineup for this type of a push. And BDS don't need to do anything too flashy, right? They don't need to yep, try and right, reinvent right. the wheel. Oregon is very, very solved as a map. It's been played probably more than any other map that we have inside of the pool. So a lot of things are very, very well known. And a nice, simple lineup like this. A couple of hard breaches, a couple of impact, uh, sorry, a couple of frag grenades, and a little bit of a nook to maybe play a little bit sneaky with. It really is all you need. And the Falcons know this. They're going to play into that quite nicely as well. Look at the information now that they're bringing. We've got the Mozzie. We've got a lot of soak of utility there. We've got the Wamai Magnets and we have those Aruni Gates and they too haven't ignored the Valkyrie. How can you if she is available? Deeper into this round, Renshiro gonna see if he can line up a nice nade to start this out. Could have been pointed at some utility positioned upstairs as well, but either way, not going to meet the marker of anybody on the Falcon. Zero damage done there. We do hear a few more nades coming out from the attackers as well. Once again, to probably clear out some of the resistance deeper into these sight holds. Speedy has continued to move forward here. A little bit nervous, it seems, about what the Falcons may have been cooking up towards the kitchen area of this map, but obviously not going to find much from that. We'll see as well. The clone of Yana work its way up through the kids' dorm stairs and leave a window of opportunity open for Renshiro to take up that position towards the top. Won't we'll stick with it, though, as we actually are going to see a little bit of a flank maneuver attempting to be lined up by the Falcons as we'll see one of their players try to push down the classroom hall. This is where BDS can be quite dangerous. We talk quite a lot about up nades. We talk about depth charges from below. This is a site that that can really start to play a lot of damage into. We've got mad skills. Could be getting himself into a bit of harm here on the top of T3. Nades starting to fly in now. Player on Repel does dodge the C4 that is impending, but we do have a player that's sneaking in from below. A little hop in that's there the for Greedy. was very ill-timed, and that's the diffuser down on the ground. This is a nightmare from this point out for BDS, and Mad Skills is making it even worse. Picks up a second on the round, and that is going to be a nightmare. BDS, they have got no chance, surely, of coming back from this one. 
Alems, one of the last players left alive. Ranchiro there does manage to get himself picked up as well. But it really isn't going to be an easy one to try and clutch out, especially with the case being at the top of T3. What can you do about it? You've got to try and challenge on to him and pick it up, but you've only got 45 seconds left, and you've still got the entire team of the Falcons to wade on through. It's going to be a very difficult challenge here. Alem's going to try and get himself up these white stairs, which he can do, but what can he do from this point? Activates the scanner, immediately is peaked and taken out there by Jaylan. Oakills comes in with one for himself. It's going to be a flawless round for Falcons here. Definitely going to see that local crowd start to get roaring a bit here. It's not just one pickup from the Falcons, it's two in a row. I have to note, of course, the big misplay that came in for BDS to enable this in the first place. Leaping into T3, either without checking it or assuming they would have been able to take that player out with a combined force. Certainly not the case, and Mad Skills sets up the Falcons for an easy close out in a flawless round on top of that. They're not out of this game just yet, but they need four more rounds. Doubling the count they've already picked up here just to be able to take it to overtime as well. It's a situation of do it again, and then do it again, and do it again, and do it again. Great couple of rounds from Falcons, and it's going to do a lot to, you know, make BDS think twice. Crowd starts getting a little bit loud. All of a sudden, this BDS player, you're going, God, we can't do anything right here. We've had two, two uh, attacking rounds and we've really not come away with all too much. I mean, that one was gone from the moment that Bride got himself taken out on that top floor. And as a player on BDS, you're going to know that that is going to be the case. It's all about resetting. BDS only needs to get lucky once here or have one good round of play on the attack to really pick up this first map and take us on to our second. The question is, will it be here? Off to see is obviously this will be the tertiary site for the Falcons. So, assumably, their weakest hold, but sometimes that assumption can be a wrong. Teams just continue to play into the normal rotation for tradition's sake, and not surprising their opponents. So let's see if the Falcons will have that good defense cooked up on the inside of the dining room or out of the kitchen hold. We'll be able to knock out a third round. We actually have two players from the Falcons holding the T3 angle as well. Joker playing on the beam down below. So this is going to be very awkward for BDS to try and clear out. That nade goes in, I'm pretty sure, in part to knock out the castle barricade. It's not going to succeed in doing that. May have had a mute jam on the other side they were trying to knock out as well. So we'll see how they try to deal with the barricade in just a second. As obviously, the tower needs to be the priority due to the two-player presence that's up here in T3 right now. We're going to see oh, great utility usage coming in from BDS. Yes, as well, just blocking out the windows with the Osa shield. Gonna try and make these two players a bit of a moot point, but no! Shiko strikes true elsewhere on the map by knocking out mad skills with a nade. What, a be what better operator than Osa to try and take out that, two that uh, top four in the tower? You can really cause a lot of damage there with those shields. Not only does it give you a little bit of visibility, but it also gives you a little bit of protection as well. BDS, they are making much fewer mistakes here as they pick up three kills on taking that tower. It's almost like Falcon said, we're going to hold the tower at work last time. Well, BDS just came and they really went for it. No longer is Breed A just repelling in without a care in the world. They are putting all of their attention onto it. And Oakills is left in the clutch only just seen about half of the round we can hear shaiko tanking a laser gate just to get on into the site a little bit quicker there as i'm more than likely the plan will start to go down fairly soon okil's options are limited here as the back wall has been opened as well picks himself at one onto a lems but a lems is almost a sacrificial lamb there as he now can give out that information and say yep okil's is on flags there is a lot of information for him to be playing with here as the plan continues to go down c4 attempted but it is not going to land. Shaiko there to close things out for BDS. And they're going to take map number one here inside of this best of three. A moment of hope for the Falcons roster here at home for them, but unfortunately it is not going to last. A little bit of an over-reliance on that T3 tower strat. It's very much a one-and-done strategy as we just saw there. The second attempt